Welcome to Caravan of Garbage, etc. and so forth. Now, Mason, Thor, Love and Thunder. <laughs> oh, you've got a lot to say, apparently. So this is Caravan of Garbage. Uh, leave a like if you could this week. Thor, the Dark Thor. Mm. Uh, he's back. He's mm. got his own long hair this time. It's not a wig, Mason. Oh, interesting. My goodness. He's got his own eyebrows, too. He's got his own eyebrows. Thank goodness. Uh, so Thor, Love and Thunder, I guess, has been credited, hailed as the first Thor movie to have a bare ass in it. Oh, I see. That's not the case. There's a bare ass in this, Mason. You better believe it. Stellan Skarsgård. Sure, it's yeah. pixelated, but mm -hmm. th does this not count? I think it is. Is this not cinema? It is absolutely cinema. Some sort of Swedish man's butt, <laughs> you know. <laughs> A real kind of cold, sad situation. That's cinema. That's cinema, baby. Eric Selvig is yeah. like the psychiatrist character from the Terminator franchise. <laughs> they just keep visiting trauma upon him over and over again. It's messed him up. I'd forgotten this came after the Avengers. Mm. So going into this, I was like, what ha what happened to this guy? Oh, no, Loki broke his brain Yeah, or it's whatever. PTSD is what's happening here. The previous movie. Which is funny. That is funny. Mm. Love seeing a butt. I did a lot of prep by being naked at home a lot to see if I could do it, and I could. Anyways, producer Kevin Feige, he described this movie in 2013 as the... Empo the worst one we've ever done, he said. <laughs> no, no. And everyone's going to agree. It's going to be at the bottom of everybody's list now and forevermore. He said it was the Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back of Marvel's Thor saga. Did he say that whole thing? I guess so. Just That's in case quote. people didn't know what Empire Strikes Back was. He's a big, he's a big egghead, mate. Of course he'd use yeah, he the full yeah, he title, say, he? wouldn't he? Mm. He probably has the original VHS that has the original Emperor in it. That was like an old woman with monkey eyes voiced by Clive Revel. Yes, I know that. that off the top of my head. That's the kind of knowledge I bring. You got knowledge. Oh, I wanted to ask, do you think that's the case? Do you think that's what this is? The worst one? Yeah. No. Like, mm. I think maybe I said last week, I think... People got to people got to put a movie on the bottom. I, I agree. And uh, of their ranking because everything's got to be ranked on the internet. And I think people are just like I vaguely remember that one, and uh, it's not End Game, so I'm putting it at the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. But the answer is Eternals is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Does that include all the televisual shows? Let's not get into it. Okay. Well, you can get into it. Go on. Does it include uh, all the TV shows? Yeah. Okay, great. So one thing I liked about this, this is pre-Grey Fog MCU. Mm, it sure is. Which I appreciate. It's got big, like, Masters of the Universe vibes. It absolutely does. Yeah. Asgard is... Huge sets. Huge mm. real sets. Yeah, yeah. They visit, you know, all those rocks that they stacked up. What's it called? Rock... Townsville. Yeah, Rock Townsville. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you mean Stonehenge? <laughs> yes, that's the one. Okay. You know, How could you not pull Stonehenge? Because I, I did use the Clive Revel thing. I used all my brain power oh, earlier. That's probably true, yeah. Uh, so there's all like ornate floors and pillars that they built. You know, that big crashed alien spaceship, like mm -hmm. the elf spaceship that's in Asgard. Yeah. Like, that's for real. They, See, but the, the mere fact that it, you, we can say elf spaceship, I think, <laughs> elevates that to a certain right. level, I think. Just the idea of, you know, this. This techno magical world, Asgard's yeah. got you know, just just these beautiful spires that that also have laser turrets on it. Oh my it's great. goodness, I love it. This was also the era where, and they threw this away pretty quickly. All the weapons have like an electric mm. sheen to them, like yeah. it's that glowing sword from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't like that. I'm okay. glad they got rid of it. But you know, they went to Iceland and they're like, "Look at this big black field we're standing in. What do you think we're gonna film it here? Like he's gonna die here. He's not really dead." No, I like this. That's, that's the voice of Alan Taylor, director of this movie. That's correct. We're gonna film it right here. You know what we're gonna so do, look at this. Dirty ground. Anyway, I just want to quickly talk about how we got here because okay. Patty Jenkins actually came on board this in 2011. She dropped out in late 2011 due to creative differences. So Alan Taylor was then brought on board, who's done a lot of work in TV, including The Sopranos and Game of Thrones. Mm. But he was unhappy with how this movie turned out. Although he received full creative freedom whilst the movie be shot, Mason, mm -hmm. he said that he was locked out of the editing suite and the studio. <laughs> oh, dramatic. I know. And the studio Who did the editing? I don't know, nobody. Feige? Feige did it. Whoa. And the An algorithm they've trained on all the previous <laughs> Marvel movies? Yeah, all four of them or whatever. Yeah, it wouldn't have been that before. many at the time, yeah. <laughs> That's why it is, you know, it has a slight point of difference from I the previous so. ones, I think. These days, if you've got that AI to do it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, and the studio turned it into a different movie during uh, post-production. He hoped this was a situation that he never had to repeat and doesn't wish it upon anybody else. But then, of course, he made Terminator Genesis, and that's a whole other story sure for did. a whole wow. other day, Mason. Oh, not for us, though. No. Let's not watch Terminator Genesis ever again. <laughs> Is Korg small? Is Korg small?
How small he is Korg? He seems small. He seems a little bit... He's Maybe he's the runt of the litter in terms of yeah. that, that, that particular rock being race. Cronin's maybe, maybe the Maybe the reason that he didn't get his uh, revolution off the ground was not that he didn't print enough flyers. Yeah. It's that he was little and people didn't respect him. <laughs> that might be it, yeah. Because that one... Or that he, he's annoying. Yeah, or he's annoying. Mm. I mean... That one is huge. Yeah, that enormous maybe that guy's the giant one, though. Maybe he's one of those ones where, like, he walks into a room and people go, oh, jeez, you're tall. <laughs> you're tall, bro. That must be fun, being yeah. a really tall guy. Yeah, it's yeah. good to not be a really tall guy. Hey, did you know you're really tall, bro? <laughs> What's it like being so tall? They're all canonically New Zealand. From New yeah, Zealand, of course right? they are. They'd have to be. Uh, speaking of New Zealand, um, Chris O'Dowd's not from New Zealand, but he is in this movie, Mason. <laughs> it's very true. Why is what he... a smooth transition Thank you've done you. There. Why is he some guy called Richard Madison? As opposed to his character from the IT crowd or the IT crowd. I would have made him Donald Blake. Right, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Right? Mm. Dye his eyebrows. Okay. Give him a stick to hold. Right, because then the because then he would of course be uh, Jane Foster's ex boyfriend. Yeah, that's and then right. There'd be some more dramatic tension there. Yeah, I guess, yeah, maybe. He's just some guy, and yeah. that's. I mean, I mean, if you're gonna get someone like that, can mm. you like do something with him? He's he's at he's at a date, and then he has a phone call. Could he be Kristen Wiig's ex boyfriend from that movie where they they get together? What movie is that again? That's Bridesmaids. Mm. Oh, definitely. One hundred percent. Was that movie out at the time? Probably not. Probably not. But let's mm. say it was. Okay. We're changing the timeline. The Christ out extended universe, and then he gets into <laughs> movie producing and crime. Get shorty. The Doubtiverse. The Doubtiverse. Yeah. Into the Doubtiverse. <laughs> Speaking of New Zealand, Dark Elves, Mason. <laughs> these these segues are incredible. They Continue. they look like something from a Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. Mm. It's interesting that they only really did make up for two of them. Like the two main ones. Uh-huh. Everyone else is just wearing a blank mask. Yes. I guess it's easier to do. It's hockey season in the world of the Dark Elves. Oh, wonderful. Mm. Every 5,000 years or whenever they wake up or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and they're all goalies. Oh, which really? Which explains the... Oh, that makes a lot of sense, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's why the games take 5,000 years. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> so, originally, one of the ideas was that Jane Foster, who does some things in this movie... Mm-hmm. Uh, was Natal- to do no things. <laughs> yeah, well, she was actually going to turn into a villain... Oh. Uh, this is going to happen because of the ether, of course, and she was going to destroy Svart uh as a show of power before going to Earth. And then, of course, they thought, let's keep the focus on Malekith and not introduce this third villain. What do you think of Malekith, though? He's there, isn't he? He's there. He's undeniably there most of the time sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever he's not on screen, people yeah. are all going, where's, where's Malekith? Where's Malekith, or Mal as I call it. Where's <laughs> Mally? My old pal Mally. He's just so compelling. Yeah, look, I like the idea of like an evil... He's so compelling, Keith, <laughs> is, they, is what they say. But I love the idea of like a race of evil dark elves. That's that's a mm. great idea. And as we'll talk about towards the end, like Christopher Eccleston was like, I hate this, this sucks. Well, what? of course, as we've mentioned, this is part of Christopher Eccleston's uh, United States tour. He got some juice from Doctor Who and he went and he did a series of, of films in the US that he hated exclusively. The Seeker, mm-hmm. G.I. Joe, this, a fourth option. Definitely. Just fielding Doctor Who calls. Does that count? <laughs> yes, I think it Constantly does. calling him. He's like, I'm not doing it. I'm not putting a leather jacket on. I'm a gentleman. Here's something though. I'm ready. Chris Evans comes back. Sure does, yes. This completely blindsided me when I saw this movie at the time. I was like, oh my God. And he, he's barely in it. Mm-hmm. It's it's nothing. It's like a throwaway <laughs> joke. And yet you have never recovered from that. <laughs> Every day you bring it up, I think. It's one of the better cameos, but it's also in an era where it was surprising to see something like that. Mm, yeah. Like now I see like the equivalent of that in the modern day. I'm like, more, not enough cameos. That's right. Oh, it's Kingo. <laughs> well, as we expected, I mean, Kingo's in everything now. But that idea of, and apparently it was, Tom Hiddleston did it first in the Captain America costume and then Chris Evans copied him doing it. And ah, that kind of, that comes across. It's good. And he's wearing the costume that he wore in the Avengers 2012. You know, it all, mm-hmm. it all makes sense. And I like it and I love it. But what else I love, Mason, Go is on. the twists and turns that one Loki long last name brings to this. Mm-hmm. So Tom Hiddleston actually wasn't going to be in this movie at all. That would have real, real, real gap in the old script there. Well, actually, uh, the, there was going to be a greater focus on Malekith and the Dark Elves. Ooh. But of course, after the Avengers and everyone loves Loki, etc., they wrote him in and they thought, how do we bring him and Thor together? Because as a character, he's so compelling, Keith. He is, isn't he? Mm. But they got them to work together because, of course, their mother gets murdered. Rene Russo gets a nice little fight scene, by the way. That's All some right. good stuff. Big fan of that. But yeah, I, I, you know, the morally ambiguous Loki, it's, it's, it's still fun to see, even mm-hmm. though this is, you know, nearly a decade old. 
it's it's nice to be like, oh, what's this guy gonna do? He's a lunatic, but he doesn't it's have true. that glowing box, which was maybe influencing, or the stick, whatever the thing was influencing him. Mason, the box and the stick. The box and the stick. I think it was mostly the stick. Because I remember again when I saw this movie, and you know, he takes off. Thor's hand at the wrist. You really believe he was gonna do it or he well, would do it? For a second, I'm like, are oh, they gonna do like, I don't know, was the destroyer arm? Was that a thing at this point? Maybe yeah. it wasn't. Ooh, 2013? Let's change the timeline it was. Okay, terrific. I mean, I think, you know, that, that could have been something, but it's so quickly resolved and <laughs> he's like, oh no, that didn't really happen. And then when he dies, you no, know, it's very heavily hinted at that he's alive well before the end of the movie. I think that's kind mm. of a, a mistake to kind of throw that in right, pretty yeah, much yeah. after his death. Mm-hmm. You know, but what about you? What are your thoughts? I think it's cool yeah. to never leave any questions. <laughs> Because then people will always be asking questions. That's true. And I think Kevin Feige knew that. He saw ahead of time and he's yeah. like, if I, don't, if I don't tell people Loki's back, people are going to ask me when Loki's coming back. Yeah, well, that's true. Mm. But he disappeared for a while. I don't think he was in anything until Ragnarok. So that's like a four-year gap. I can't believe this one was... It came out two years after the first yes. with an Avengers movie in the middle. That's right. That's crazy. Crazy, right? Yeah. I like the end fight. Go Different on. portals and such. Yes. I think when presented with that now, I'd be like, these aren't enough universes to visit. Oh, sure. Yeah, right. I, I, this Three universes. For sure. One of them's like a, like a floor full of dirt. One's like a forest. Mm-hmm. A bit of space and, you know, yeah, and then yeah, back yeah. on back in England. Mm. Yuck. Come on. <laughs> but I, The dreariest <laughs> universe of them all. Sure. <laughs> but, you know, you see things like when Thor is taken somewhere else. His hammer immediately goes to fight him. Yeah. You know, it's off into space. He has to catch the tube, mm. which is something... Like a loyal dog, it follows him. Yeah, that's which right. Which makes it all the more sad when it's crushed into powder and Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> it should have made some whimpering noises. I think so. Yeah. Just one squirt of blood. I think that's pretty... Like, I think it's, you know, a pretty solid fight scene at the end. And I remember, you know, the episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that came after where they went, they broke all the windows in this library or whatever. Oh. Do you remember that? I don't remember that, no. Yeah, it's good stuff. Why do you think, though, the weird blood tornado never took off in the same way that the laser sky beam did? That's a what great is it question. about a man losing his limbs with blood spraying out of the of the stumps? And he's going, I've got all the power. And mm. he's like, it's swirling around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why can't that be a new... Why can't that be something? That's a really good question. Why I didn't mean... it happen at the end of Obi-Wan Kenobi? Darth Vader <laughs> was like, now I've got all the power. And all the blood is just spraying out of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spinning in it's a big be- force well, circle. Well, again, I think it's because... That is, uh, that's a little bit less ambiguous, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you see somebody torn to absolute shreds, just just their lifeblood just bursting forth from them, you know they're dead for sure. But a sky beam, yeah. what can that... Maybe they're being disintegrated. Maybe they're being sent to another dimension. Maybe they're going through time, you know what? There's always, mm. there's more options with a sky beam, you know what I mean? That's a great point, actually. That's one of Feige's, you know, guiding principles of the Marvel Universe. A lot yeah. of options with a sky beam. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Baby. Yeah, I agree. I'd love to see him in an interview and someone ask him, like, a really poignant question question about the future of the MCU. And he takes off his baseball cap and just a beam shoots out the top <laughs> of his head into the sky. Sure, and he's right. like, these are all the answers you seek. <laughs> and everyone's like, wow, that's pretty good. Don't you think that would be something? Yes. <laughs> and I like their reaction there. This is pretty good. <laughs> and he's like, man, this is my best. It's my best stuff, actually. I don't... Uh, but of course, this has a post credits hinting that this is an infinity stone and so on mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. forth. Or they actually say it. I think I they said, should have called it Infinity Stuff. Infinity Stuff? Well, because it's an ether. It's not a, it's it's not a, a stone, moisture. is it? Right? <laughs> yeah. They should have said the, the various Infinity Goops, you know, and then they could have tied Gwyneth Paltrow to it. That's true. Mm. Do you see it turn into a stone? No. Because I feel like when it's collected in a later movie, it's already in the stone, right? Yes. Well, it's in that little box they give the collector. Yeah, but that's, that's not a little stone you put into a glove. Okay, but maybe you have to put it in a fridge for a while. Yeah, okay. You know, in an ice cube mate. tray. In the ice cube tray, exactly, yes. Okay, that makes sense. No, I think I said this at the time after seeing it. Maybe to you, maybe on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows that comes out every Monday, including the episode we're doing on Thor, Love and Thunder, Mason. Whoa. Were we podcasting at this point? We were po- podcasting in 2013. Yeah, around. Yeah, I think we were. Okay. Anyways. I bet this turns out to be false and it's very embarrassing I'm for changing us. the timeline, Mason. Terrific. But... 
Are the Asgardians respected? Are they like the Amish of the universe? They're like, oh. well, we only use magic, even though, you know, it's not really magic yeah, yeah, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they turn up, you know, to the collector's house and he's got a big cape on and whatever and there's a weird thing in a jar uh-huh. and they're in their big ornate armour and they're like, please take care of this, good sir. Well, the collector does give them a big bow, but it's so big that it seems a little bit sarcastic yeah. now that I think about it, yeah. How do you think the universe sees these people? Just just dirty hippies, probably. <laughs> They think they're right up the top there with all their yeah. royal stuff and they're they're all their 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 pomp and circumstance, but they're like, look at these grubs. They're the, look at these absolute grubs coming. They're in the here. Byron Bays <laughs> of the universe, wouldn't you say? See the two Asgardians, they've come in here, just watch them watch them in case they take something before they leave. <laughs> <laughs> Keep an eye on them, check their bags on the way out. Yeah. Probably take a weird crystal or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here's something though. I'm ready to hear something. Now normally I'll do a green trivia. And don't get me wrong, I'll do a green trivia today, but I want to put this in before. This section is called Almost Everyone in This Movie Hates It or Forgot They Were In It. Trivia. Oh no. Got a bunch of quotes here. This is from Christopher Eccleston who says he hated playing Malekith and did it for money. It took (laughs) six to eight hours to apply his makeup, which he says Marvel lied to him about. And you know, it gets to the point in the movie where half his face is also messed up. Yeah. So that's a whole other level of makeup to do. And he's got like big old radar dish ears and then you got to put the big elf ears on top of that. That can't (laughs) be comfortable. Probably there in the makeup chair being like, boy, I wish I was still playing Destro at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Wish I hadn't given up playing Destro, (laughs) which was maybe before this, but also maybe after this. Maybe I'm I'm (laughs) dreaming of being Destro soon in the future. Uh, Natalie Portman was rumoured to want to leave this project after Patty Jenkins left, uh, but she couldn't due to being contractually obligated. (laughs) And I guess that's why... That's how they get you. Yeah, she mostly disappeared until... More recently, yes, she is in Endgame, but that's. I think they recorded some new dialogue and then they used scrapped footage for right, that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zachary Levi, who plays Fandral, mm. he was of course cast as Fandral in the first movie. Couldn't do it, mm-hmm. so came back for this one. And he says, "To be honest, I had seen the first one and I didn't really feel like the Warriors Three were used all that well. So I was like, Hey, are you going to actually use these folks?" And they said. Oh no, we're going to use the Warriors 3 a lot in Thor The Dark World. A lot. Yeah, you're going to be busy. And I was like, okay. So I signed up. But then he said, I didn't have much to do, you know. And really, nothing to do in the third one. And that is true. Mm, Very true. Yeah, but of course, he's playing a different character now. Chuck. I'm changing the timeline, Mason. Terrific. Uh, Chris O'Dowd actually forgot he was in this movie when he was asked about his role in the MCU Uh a few years back. And then when they jogged his memory... He was like, oh, I, oh, you know, I do remember that. And then he was asked, do you think you survived the snap? And he's like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and so it was explained to him. Uh-huh. You can watch this interview, by the way, that it was explained to him, what, you know, half the universe, et cetera, and so forth. Uh-huh. And he went, yeah, I, you know, I probably survived. I don't know. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Idris Elba has said he disliked working on this movie as the constant reshoots were exhausting and time consuming. And that helmet's like the biggest helmet in the MCU. It's it, probably super oh, heavy. I would put a balloon in it to make it lighter, but I bet they didn't. And also, like, a lot of the time it's, it is it, it is like head-to-toe armour. Yeah. And he's one of those actors where I go, man, Idris Elba would be great in the MCU. Oh, wait, he is in the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He gets five lines every five movies. That's true. Uh, he even referred to working on this movie as torture. Whoa. Chris Hemsworth even said, the first one is good, the second one is meh. What <laughs> What masculinity... It's on the bottom of my MCU ranking, <laughs> what? which is Thor, Thor Ragnarok, Thor The Dark World. <laughs> I've not seen any of the ones I'm not in. <laughs> what masculinity was the classic archetype? It just starts to feel very familiar. And in another interview, he said, I wasn't stoked with what I'd done in Thor 2. I was a little disappointed in what I'd done. I don't think I grew the character in any way. I don't think I showed an audience something unexpected and different. And I think concerning the character of Thor, Mm -hmm. that's probably true. Yeah. He's not the most interesting thing in this okay movie. But, you know, he's doing it. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's doing a big Loki. I'm <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And here's a quote from Stellan Skarsgård. It says, I showed everyone my bum and I loved it. <laughs> 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 Makes a nice change from being sad and Scandinavian, I guess. I bet it does. Mm. 
Sorry, got to go. My wife's been murdered. Oh, he's in one of those, he's in one of those my wife got yeah, murdered dramas. Sad, yeah, he's in one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm the detective who has to investigate. Great. Yeah. It's time for Green Trivia, Mason. I'm, I'm ready. I mentioned this up top, but yeah, Chris Hemsworth grew out his hair for over a year Whoa. to make a more authentic long hair rather than use a wig. Like in previous Thors and some of the other Thors. <laughs> not, um, I think not Ragnarok because he's got short hair or whatever. Quite That's easy to do and whatever. Uh, Elsa Pataki, who you might know as the wife of Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> she actually plays Jane in that moment at the end with the last kiss. Oh. You never really see her face. <laughs> Couldn't get Natalie Portman. So they were just like, he can kiss his wife. And I think that's nice. And I'll just end on this, Mason, Go on. <laughs> before we do box office. Like all MCU Phase 2 movies, somebody loses an arm or a hand or something, which oh. is a homage to The Empire Strikes Back. Now, in a similar bit of Star Wars trivia, did you know the original Star Wars had the working title of Blue Harvest? I didn't know that. That's fascinating. Yeah, so that seems just that's some good stuff to kind of. It's a good piece pull that of out of the end on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you're in a pub, you're in a pub. Yeah, yeah, or a pub quiz. Yep. Everything's riding on it. That's the last question. Yep. Trust us. Bang, bang. Star Wars Blue Harvest. You got it. You won that meat platter. That's right. Box office, Mason. On a budget of between 150 to 170 million dollars. Those things are normally on the upper end. Uh, it made $644.8 million, which is quite a bit more than the previous one. Not as much as the Avengers, obviously. But mm. this was a growing man and a growing brand. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. And look, as mentioned, yeah, it, it was the lowest ranked MCU movie on Rotten Tomatoes for quite a while. It currently sits at a fresh 66%, just below The Incredible Hulk, which is something like 67, 68%, uh-huh. which I disagree with, by the way. Excuse me. Now, are you saying that you think The Incredible Hulk's better than that? No. Worse. Yeah, okay. worse than this, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that being said, I haven't seen The Incredible Hulk since the year 2003. That's right, I'm changing the timeline. <laughs> but of course, it is now far above the lowest ranked MCU movie, which is The Eternals, coming in at 47%. <sighs> wow. We've talked about two Thor movies, mm. and if only there were more to talk about in Caravan of Garbage, but I feel like grouping these two together is a good way to do it, right? Yeah! Yeah! You can actually see it early if you head over to BigSandwich.co, where there's a bunch of early videos and bonus-exclusive podcasts, plus movie commentaries. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, as mentioned, that goes up there on Sunday as opposed to Monday. Mm-hmm. It's just a great place if you're like, I would like to support these cackling idiots. Sure. Where could I give them money? This is a good place for that. I think so. Yeah, huge back catalogue. Anyways, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Thank you so much, Lawrence, for the edit. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you so much, Ben, for the edit. Thank you, Ben. And we'll see you guys another time. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. Or that goop, Or that big wish. pile of goop. Put your grab hand the in goop. It. Grab that goop. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.